Well, let, let's jump back to the, the desert tortoise conservation. You know, you, we, we talked about sort of the, the reverence you have for that species and you keep them as well. And, and I, I, first I want to just under, have a grasp of what, what's their numbers like population wise. You said that they've just been listed as endangered. How, how endangered is this species? There, well, so I'm also a tortoise biologist. I mean, that's, that's what I do kind of on my weekends <laughs> when I don't have like, and I don't think I have enough to do. I go and like do uh, tortoise biology work. Um, I'm also a, a board member on the desert tortoise council and like those that that council makes up like the people who make up that council are some of the leading tortoise biologists in the world you know like Christine Berry is like the the godmother of like tortoises she's like she's she's the one you know <laughs> but um having her on there and like I think amongst those people um in conversations that we have at like symposium or just in like meetings I think it's really agreed upon that like endangered even is doesn't cut it for this species. You know, it's, it's gone to that point and like listings uh, for species are very politicized nowadays. So they don't necessarily reflect the actual numbers that accurately We're like, we, yeah, they're listing as endangered now. And we're, we're glad for that, that they're getting some kind of recognition of declines, but the declines that we see in this species give it, in our opinion, the listing of like critically endangered. This is an animal that hasn't shown any signs of recovery. It has only shown signs of decline. You know, the, 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 there's a number of threats against it, you know, from, uh, from climate change being a huge one to a lot more mechanical ones like predation from like ravens. Um, the raven population, just to give context for that, um, is thousands of times larger than it should be in the desert just because of trash and because of uh our because of us you know they 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 rely heavily on like our our garbage to, and it subsidizes them so um yeah raven, ravens really prey heavily on um hatchling baby tortoises and to put it into uh even into more context on how impactful that can be um desert tortoises like they they have very small clutch sizes right so though you're looking at some an animal that'll have that'll lay 10 to 12 eggs a year you know one one female lay 10 to 12 eggs a year and of those babies in ideal circumstances I mean no predation in an ideal world say 500 years ago these the survival of those animals to adulthood is probably 10 to 20 percent really you know they're yeah they're they're basically the desert's version of ravioli like they're, they're really soft, squishy packets of like, of food that are slow, you know? So, um, things eat them, snakes eat them. Things have always ate them. Coyotes, bobcats, kid foxes. That's just been natural predation. But now with our presence and with our influence on like the tortoise population and because of like climate change and extended droughts, that's that 10 to 20% is just not there anymore. Like we're barely, we're barely seeing any recruitment from, from young ones and that's why there's such a, a heavy need for like um head starting programs now where like you have all these organizations and the parks working on um pulling gravid females from the wild and having them lay their eggs in in pens putting the tortoise back out raising those babies and then to a to a size where they're less likely to be predated on and then re-releasing them into the landscape and that's really that's triage you know as i said to begin with like a lot of the work in the desert is triage and yeah that's that's i hope that puts into into perspective just how kind of dire things are for them numbers wise it's like i can't put a number on it i know all i can say is that even in the past in my 25 years of of doing this or 20 years of doing this whatever i know i don't see nearly as many tortoises as i used to Mm-hmm. You know, like even in the past, you know, five or six years, the 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 number I've seen of like in areas where I know that they're there, you know, they're just not there anymore. So, yeah, that's uh, and as you already mentioned, you know, they are an incredibly important piece to the landscape and just the the ecosystem stability in general. So to lose them would be, uh, you know, who knows what would happen? You'd have way more. I don't know. I mean, you, you start to see a decrease in plant life and. Uh, there would be a whole cascade of negative things that would happen. Yeah, I'm sure you're already yeah, seeing talking, some of that. Yeah, yeah. We're talking like ecological collapse here. We're like, if the tortoise, so just to, to kind of break down, like how, what would happen if tortoises were to just disappear from the landscape today? 
the burrows normally last a year or two, you know, maybe a little longer, maybe three, four years, but without the tortoise constantly going in and eroding that and maintaining that burrow, eventually it'll collapse. And when it collapses, that means that animals lose that big, deep, cool, moist hole to like, to get away from the sun. That's going to continue to happen over the course of, I don't know, maybe five to 10 years. Burrows will slowly just be not be there. The animals that rely on them will start to decline. Mice, lizards, arachnids, that's food sources for larger predators, snakes, liz larger lizards, larger mammals, birds. Those then start to decline, you know? So now you're starting to see this kind of trophic cascade of like um, things declining because they don't have food. You know, and then on a larger scale, because the tortoise isn't eating um, seeds from like native grasses and native perennials and annuals, um, the biodiversity of those plants starts to bottleneck. You know, you do, you instead of having a tortoise that can eat seeds from one plant and walk, you know, half a mile to a mile away and, and poop it out and, you know, liven up the genetics of that area, it's not happening anymore. So you just have plants interbreeding that leads to less um vitality in those populations and then those populations eventually decline so <laughs> probably it wouldn't take it wouldn't be happen in a short amount of time but without the tortoise on this landscape within 50 to 100 years um maybe 150 years the desert would look vastly different there'd be nothing there'd be no life here there'd be no or a lot less life here there'd be a lot less plant diversity and it just wouldn't be the desert that we see today Wow. And some for, for some people that may not know plant biology, there's a lot of plants that require seeds to move through the gut of an animal in order for them to be scarified and for actually to, to germinate at some point in the spring or whenever they grow. So it's not that they can just sprinkle the seeds around and have them go. That's that's how integral species are to, to be folded in with each other to make sure things operate. So besides the ravens, is there other things that are really impacting? I, I imagine humans, you said climate change, but it's, is there anything else that's, that like climate change is a tough one because it's kind of a very broad problem, picking up trash to, to reduce raven population, but is there any other low hanging fruit? You know, there's, it's, it, again, it comes to education because like another mechanical reason for their decline is through like illegal off, off highway vehicle travel. So like people going out there and just like thinking there's nothing out here and just like ripping up the desert and like running over bushes and like running over tortoises. You know, there's people that are st that still go out there and like shoot them with shotguns because they're like, yeah, it's boring out here. Like, I'm gonna shoot that thing. Really heinous, heinous stuff. But like, um, yeah, I mean, it, the what I, what, I, what I always push, like what we push on a daily basis is just getting people to understand enough that. It'll, that it leads them to a point of interest that they're like, Hey, I want to read about this thing. You know, I want to learn a little bit more about it. And that's all it takes. Cause then you start, those people start looking into it and they start like realizing these things. And they're like, I want to help these things. You know, that's why I do stuff like this. That's why I do podcasts. And I do like, anytime I could talk about this and like get people out there to just like get that spark of like looking into it. Like that's really what it takes, man. I mean, like, th like you said, there's not much we could do. Uh, there is some we could do about climate change, but again, that's, such a huge issue but yeah i mean what one some of the work i do um for as a biologist is um is like working with the raven problem that's such a huge problem that i think that there's there's hands-on ways to mitigate it and like to to address it so one of the things that we do is uh like subsidy denial right we'll like we'll like post up outside of like um really heavily utilized subsidy zones like dumps or wastewater treatment plants or um organics fields or something just places where like where the ravens are getting a lot of food and we'll sit there with these lasers and like scare them away from those sites and like build an, an aversion to like those areas where they're getting a lot of food and there's that's shown some um some improvement in like declines of like raven population but it's such it has to happen on such a broad scale, you know, like it's it's right now it's it's learning what we can do. And like we're we're up against it. There's a there's a really quickly ticking clock that we're up yeah. against. 
Well, yeah. even just the concept of the the burrows is really fascinating. When will, can you like when you find a tortoise a tortoise burrow, a burrow that's being occupied by a tortoise? Is it common to also find other species in there as as well at the exact same time, or do they typically occupy the burrow after the tortoise has left? Oh no, they're all in there. <laughs> I mean, there's a there's been times um, where some of my buddies, especially like have found a tortoise kind of on the mouth of his burrow and like a sidewinder just kind of like sitting there with them. Or like cool. you look down, you look down into the burrow and there's a tortoise butt that you see there. And then right behind the tortoise butt is like a big Mojave rattlesnake and like a tarantula and like a black widow and like some like soul puget, like the little like camel spiders. It's just when you look at even when they're empty, like you like when the tortoise isn't there, you look down in that burrow and there's stuff in there. There's like little like rodents and like rodent nests at the end, like little offshoots um, that go into something else's hole that it just kind of like used the tortoise burrow as like a start and then like went down there and like did a little offshoot and it just kind of like lives in an apartment next to the tortoise. So yeah, they, they're really heavily utilized. That's amazing. And, and most of the animals that are using them or not most, but a lot of them do not have the capacity to dig a hole, you know, sidewinders yeah. and snakes, they're not going to be digging holes. Even the small rodents can dig little holes, but they're not going to get this giant refuge down deep into the cool, you know, moist area without that starter burrow being done by something so large, like a tortoise. So I can imagine well, how crucial that is. And so you talked about some of these efforts to you know, do some quote unquote farm raised type situations where they're, the females are laying eggs. How, how do you go about finding the gravid females? Is that just a seasonal thing? And is it fairly simple? Yeah. I mean, uh, it, I mean, it takes a biologist to certify.